If you're grateful for what God has done, give God praise, honor, and glory. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. We'll bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in our mouths. Somebody can testify that we have tasted and we know that the Lord is good. Come now, let us make a joyful north unto the Lord, all ye lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Know ye that the Lord, he is God. It is he that made us and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Let us enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. Why? Because the Lord is good. His mercy is everlasting and his truth endureth to all generations. Lord, we praise you, we magnify you, we exalt you, we extol you, for our testimony is that there is no God like our God. Let us pray. Dear God, we come into your presence on this first Sunday in a brand new year, simply to say thank you. There were those that started out on this journey, but for reasons unknown to us, they're not here. But because of your grace and your mercy, you allowed us to cross over into a brand new year. You brought us through dangers seen and unseen. We had challenges that were too big for us, obstacles that we had never seen before, but we hear the words of scripture that lets us know that with God, nothing shall be impossible. And so through your grace and your mercy, as our forefathers and mothers would say, you have allowed our golden moments to roll on just a little while longer. We say thank you. And now God, if there's anything as we commence this year and this service, if there's anything in our hearts, in our spirits, in our mind that would prevent us from worshiping you, we pray that you would bid it to move right now. We rebuke any negative spirit that would come against our individual and collective worship. We rebuke all demonic forces. We declare now that this is a sanctuary for you, O oh God. This is your house. You are welcome in this place. Come, oh God, throw your weight around so that we would have gone down from this place. There'd be no doubt that we've been in the presence of the Lord. And, oh God, I lift up this congregation, those that are physically here, those that are watching virtually, those that had a desire but could not be here. You know the problems that we face. You know our personal and private problems. You know our public problems. We cast them on you because you said that we can cast our cares upon you because you care for us. Someone is facing a diagnosis from the doctor. Someone is wondering how they're going to be able to pay their bills. Somebody has confusion in their household. But we know that you are able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we're able to ask or think. We pray that even while we yet pray, that you are making the crooked places straight and the rough places plain and you're making a path through the Red Sea. And we promise you that as victories are won, as shackles fall off, we won't take any credit for it, but we'll tell everybody that it is because of Jesus. Amen. Now we pray that you would bless this service. Help us to know that we are here for only one purpose, and that's to worship you, to praise you, to magnify you, to exalt your name. Bless those persons that minister in music today. Bless those that are in the congregation. Bless your word that will go forth. Help somebody to come crying, I yield, I yield. What must I do to be saved? We thank you now, we praise you, and we give this service to you. Hear our prayer now, incline your ear to us. It's in the only name that matters. In the name of Jesus the Christ, we pray. Amen.
some love to our music ministry. I want to thank them so much for the wonderful ministry of music that they share with us each and every week. God is able. And you do know that when we get to heaven, there won't be any preaching. There'll just be singing and praising God. Um, because we'll all be redeemed, so there'll be no need for a word of redemption. And we have a song that the angels cannot sing, but they know nothing of sin and sting, but we can say that we've been redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. The angels and the cherubims, they praise him 24-7, but when we get there, it'll be a different kind of praise, because when we think about how he's brought us and how he's kept us and the fact that he's never left us, we've got to give him praise that nobody else can give, because you can't praise him for me because you don't know what he's done for me. I can't praise him for you because I don't know what he's done for you, and there's some folk who think that it doesn't take all of that, but it takes a whole lot when I begin to think about what God has done for me. All the hell he brought me through in 2020 and because of his grace and his mercy he allowed me to see a brand new year and a brand new day i give him praise i give him honor i give him glory because if you think about it then you got to thank him that's why i join in with the psalmist and i declare bless the lord oh my soul and all that is within me bless his holy name bless the lord oh my soul and forget not all of his benefits towards us Lord, we love you, we bless you, and we give you glory. Yeah. You can let folk come right on in while I'm talking. Don't keep them waiting out there. Let them get their temperature checked, whatever they need to do, and come on into the house of the Lord. I don't know, I'm glad to be in the service. And one more time. Uh, if you notice this in announcements, first of all, I did not know, but one of the finest gentlemen in our church, um, always so pleasant, always willing to do, just have to let him know what you want him to do. And um, he's, he's, he's on the money. One day we had a whole big delivery. I didn't know what to do. I called his brother. He said, what do you need? I was there trying. He jumped up in the truck, took the stuff. I think the mask came. And so he had a birthday on New Year's Day. Um, and that's Brother Errol Clark. Help us wish him happy birthday. So a couple of announcements quickly. Um, thank those of you who joined us for our New Year's Eve worship experience. We had a good worship experience here at the church for those of you who came as we thank God for allowing us the privilege of seeing the last day of the year and then we went home and said, Mary said, Happy New Year. And uh, Mrs. Thorne reminded me that this is probably the first time in 40 years that we have seen the New Year come in in the house and we were actually in the same place at the same time. So I hope that your holiday was a good one. Did you have a good Christmas? Okay, so now that we're in a new year, it's time to resume. So I want you to know that on tomorrow we will commence back with our noonday prayer. 
pastor will be on for noonday prayer. I'll be looking for you. I did need to step aside for just some private study and devotion and rest, but I've missed you. So I'll be looking for you on tomorrow for noonday prayer. And then on Wednesday, we will commence our Bible study. I have gone through um, the lessons of the month of December, which is where the book commences. And, um, you know, God is just awesome because most of what they're doing in the month of December, I've already preached. So we're going to start with the first lesson of January. So for the first time, we'll be on track. We won't be lagging behind. So study the first lesson in January. If you have any questions about any of the previous lessons that we won't cover, just ask me. And feel free to bring your questions. That's why it's Bible study. So it's a dialogue. So I want us to, you know, um, be in dialogue because good questions make for good conversation. And if I don't know the answer, somebody that's on the line might know the answer. And then if none of us know it, we'll research it and we'll find it for the following week. But I do know this, that the grass withers and the flower fadeth, but the word of God will stand forever. Also, because we're in a new year, I need to make sure that you fill out your registration form. They're in the pew. So if you haven't filled out the registration form, even if you give electronically, we still need a record of the people who are registered, and we still need to assign you a number. We are taking a look at, do we need to purchase all of these envelopes? And so we're, we're working through that. But in the meantime, for this year, we have purchased all of these envelopes, something like 1,200. So you need to get your envelope even if you don't use it. Um, but the Lord may bless you in a special way, and you may just decide that one of these Sundays when you're here or put it in the mail when you don't want to go electronically. But I'll, I'm grateful for however you want to bless the Lord. Um, online, push, pay. We're going to find some other vehicles because uh, I'm learning about Vimno and Zell and we'll, whatever way works for you. You need to drop it off. If you can't get here and you need a special pickup, because the expenses of the church continue, we're putting in um, updated sound system. And I want to thank the sound room committee for all the work that they do. But it's very sophisticated. It's like a cockpit up there. But we need to do that so that we will be able to do ministry in the 21st century. And I thank God for all that God is doing. And then finally, I'm there. Some of you didn't make it. <clears throat> Excuse me. Some of you didn't make it through the Christmas holiday, and you may want to give a Christmas offering that you didn't have a chance to give. You don't want to rob God. You don't want to take God's money into the new year, um, because the Bible says, um, if you rob God, that you're cursed with a curse, even this whole nation. Maybe some people are not as blessed as they would like to be, because they're trying to hold on what belongs to God, but I've discovered if you give God what belongs to him, he'll bless you in ways that you don't know. Amen. This is not part of the, my, my um, comments, but it just came in my spirit. The other thing that it says in the, when we get to the Holy Communion, the Bible says that if you eat or drink unworthily, you eat and drink damnation to your own soul, and it says, for this cause, Many are sick amongst you, and many have fallen asleep. James Thornton's interpretation of that is that in the new year, try to have a good attitude. Try to be pleasant, and try to be kind one to another. Try to show more love. And as you do that, the that um, you can be well. Some people are not feeling well because you just have the wrong disposition. You're mad and nobody knows why you're mad. And it says also that if you have ought against your brother or your sister, leave your gift at the altar, go and make peace with your brother, and then you can come back and your gift will be acceptable to God. Um, I wrote something on, on my Facebook page to say that if I have 
mistreated anybody, I'm sorry. If you owe me anything, then I've canceled the debt because I want to go into this year without a whole lot of unnecessary baggage. And so I hope that you will join me in doing that. And let's um, join in with the choir as they come now. Appropriate selection in this season. Come on and praise the Lord.
let me take this opportunity right now to show and express our appreciation to Sister Courtney Long, who has led our music ministry in this season. <laughs> And she's getting ready to go back to school in a few weeks. And Mrs. I call her Miss Z. Miss Adrian Z has agreed to give leadership to our music ministry. Show us some love. I mean, the Lord will provide. He will make a way out of no way. Well, it's not no way for him because he is the way. Amen. It's no way for us because we don't see the way. That's why we got to stay with the one who doesn't just know the way, but who is the way. Oh, that sounds good. That's the truth. He said, Lord, just keep speaking to me. Text messages keep coming in my head straight from heaven. The grass withereth and the flower fadeth. The word of our God shall stand forever. Our lesson for the morning is found in the gospel according to Matthew chapter 2. Matthew chapter 2, I'm reading from the New International Version of the Bible. And I'm going to go ahead and just read the whole chapter. Because if you don't get anything else, you'll have the word. When you have it, say amen. amen. All right, Matthew is the first gospel in the New Testament. After Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea, during the time of King Herod, Magi from the east came to Jerusalem and asked, where is the one who has been born King of the Jews? We saw his star in the east and have come to worship him. When King Herod heard this he was disturbed, and all Jerusalem with him. When he had called together all the people, chief priests and teachers of the law, he asked them, where is the child was to be born? In Bethlehem in Judea, they replied, for this is what the prophet has written. But you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah, for out of you will come a ruler who will be shepherds of my people Israel. Then Herod called the Magi secretly and found out from them the exact time the star had appeared. He sent them to Bethlehem and said, go and make a careful, a careful search for the child. As soon as you find him, report to me so that I too may go and worship him. After they had heard the king, they went on their way and the star they had seen in the east went ahead of them until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they were overjoyed. On coming to the house, they saw the child with his mother Mary, and they bowed, and they bowed down and worshipped him. Then they presented their treasures and presented him with gifts of gold and incense and a mirth. Having been warned in a dream not to go back to Herod, they returned to their country by another route. When they had gone, the angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream. Get up, he said, take the child and his mother and escape to Egypt. Stay there until I tell you, for Herod is going to search for the child to kill him. So he got up, took the child and his mother during the night and left for Egypt, where he stayed until the death of Herod. And so was fulfilled what the Lord had said through the prophet, out of Egypt I call my son. When Herod realized that he had been outwitted by the Magi, he was furious, and he gave orders to kill all the boys in Bethlehem and its vicinity who were two years old and under, in accordance with the time he had learned from the Magi. Then what was said through the prophet Jeremiah was fulfilled. A voice is heard in Rama, weeping in great mourning, Rachel weeping for her children and refusing to be comforted because they are no more. After Herod died, an angel of the Lord appeared in a dream to Joseph 
in Egypt and said, get up and take the child and his mother and go to the land of Israel for those who are trying to take the child's life are dead. So he got up, took the child and his mother and went to the land of Israel. And when he heard that Archelaus was reigning in Judah in place of his father, Herod, he was afraid to go there. Having been warned in a dream, he withdrew to the district of Galilee and he went and lived in a town called Nazareth. So was fulfilled, which was said through the prophet, he will be called a Nazarene. The word of God for the people of God, thanks be to God. Let's give him some praise right this minute. Come on. You know, as long as you got the Lord on your side, the world can't touch you. The world can't do you no harm. Amen? Listen to this little song. No weapon fall me shall prosper it won't work no weapon formed against me shall prosper it won't work I know God he said he would do he will stand by his word he will come through I said God will do what he said he would do he will stand by his word he will come through no weapon for me shall prosper. It won't work. No weapon form against me shall prosper. Cause it just won't work. I said God What he said he would do. He's not a man that he should lie. He will come through. Said I won't be afraid of the arrows by day. <laughs> From the hands of my enemy. I can stand my ground with the Lord. Stands that have said will not succeed. No weapon formed against me shall. I 
wish I could get a witness this morning. If you believe. It just won't work. It just won't work. Thank you. God bless you. Hallelujah. No weapon formed against us will prosper. We have a mighty God on our side. Amen. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah in here this morning. Hallelujah. Come on, give God some praise in here this morning. That's a good word for somebody. No weapon formed against us will prosper. prosper. We don't know how God will send his word. Sometimes he can send it in a song, or sometimes in a testimony, sometimes in the scripture, sometimes in the proclamation of the word. However, God wants to speak to us in this season, if we're going to make it through this year, we have to position ourselves to hear what God wants to say. Somebody give him praise, honor, and glory. What I want to talk about today, for the time that is mine, is protecting the gift that God has given you. Protecting the gift that God has given you. Consecrate me now to thy service, Lord, by the power of your grace divine. Let my soul look up with a steadfast hope and my will be lost in thine. Draw me nearer and nearer, precious Lord, to thy precious bleeding side. Thou God, allow the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart to be found acceptable in thy sight. It's in the only name that matters, the name of Jesus the Christ, we pray. Amen. Last week, the first Sunday after Christmas, and let me pause and say that these decorations are just absolutely beautiful. You can't see where I'm standing from, but as you get a chance to walk around, we got stars and lights, and it's just absolutely beautiful. I love this time of the year. Of course, the season is coming rapidly to an end. And so last week we preached from the subject, God will keep his word. We learned that after Jesus was born, he was circumcised on the eighth day, which was the custom and the mandate for every male child. After the days of pur purification, he was brought into the temple and offered back to God. It was at that time that Mary and Joseph brought Jesus into the temple that the prophet Simeon was moved by the Spirit to go into the temple. And we suggested that it's important to move when God tells you to move because it's only when your time matches up with God's time, with God's time, that we're in the right time. The Bible says now there was a man in Jerusalem called Simeon who was righteous and devout, and he was waiting for the consolation of Israel, and the Holy Spirit was upon him. It had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not die before he had seen the Lord's Messiah. Moved by the Spirit, he went into the temple, and when he saw Jesus, the Bible says, 
that he took him in his arms and praised God and said, now let your servant depart because my eyes have seen your salvation. I just want you to know that if God makes a promise, God will keep God's word. Jesus, this precious gift has now been given to the world. The precious lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world is given to all people. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. This morning, this second Sunday after Christmas and the first Sunday in the new year, I want to talk from this thought protecting the gift that God has given you or God has given us. Be well assured that God is going to bless you this year. God has given you gifts that you, like me, and like the baby Jesus, must develop, grow, nurture, and protect for the glory of God. Some of you have the gift of hospitality, and you might need to join our quarantine team or our greeters. Some of you have the gift of music, and you might consider being a part of the music ministry. Some of you have management and organizational skills, and we're going to need to try to regroup and reset so that we can meet with certain organizations that we have not touched this year as a consequence of the pandemic, but we have to keep on moving because God is good. Some of you have creative abilities, and God wants you to use these gifts for his glory and for the edification of God's people. Jesus says, and we said at every communion, no man lights a candle and put it under a bushel, but on a candlestick, and it giveth all, it giveth light unto all that are in the house. Let your light so shine that people might see your good works. Glorify your Father which is in heaven. So it is not God's desire that you in your false humility should hide your gift and not use it for the glory of God because you don't want anybody to know what you can do. The reason that God gave you the gift in the first place is so that you can edify and uplift God's people, not for your glory, but so that God could get the glory. And then we must use these gifts with the fruits of the Spirit. And Paul tells us in Galatians chapter 5, verse 22, but the fruits of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Against such things there is no law. Let's get back to the text, and I won't keep you too long. After Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea, during the time of King Herod, Magi, and they're called Magi because that's the same as wise men. So we use the terminology wise men. Now we don't know whether there was three, but they say there were three wise men, and that's because they bought three gifts, gold, frankincense, and myrrh. The gold represented the royalty of God. The frankincense represented his divinity and the mirth represented the sorrow and the pain that would be Jesus as he would die on the cross for our sins. And so the king said, where is the one who has been born king of the Jews? They asked, and he, they say, we saw his star in the east and have come to worship him. Now King Herod was concerned because he was the king, and to hear that there was going to be another king, even though in the form of a baby, made the king disturbed. Some people get upset when God has other blessings that God wants to use. And so when King Herod heard this, the text says in chapter 2, verse 3, he was disturbed and all Jerusalem with him. And when he had called together all the people's chief and the teachers of the law, he asked them, where is this Messiah to be born? They said, in Bethlehem. For this is what the prophet said. But you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. For out of you will come a ruler who will shepherd my people. God will keep his word. Herod knew the Testament prophecy. Um, he knew the Old Testament prophecy, prophecy. God had said that his shepherd would come out of Bethlehem. However, Herod could not adhere to God's word because... Like Judas, Satan had entered him. This is Herod the Great. 
he was an exceptionally cruel king because he allowed himself to be ruled by demonic forces. He had ordered the murder of one of his wives, his mother-in-law he had had killed, his brother-in-law he had had killed, and he had had at least three sons killed because he felt that they would be a threat to his power. He did bring some stability to Galilee and Judea. He began some renovations on the temple. However, the temple was not even completed until 68 years after his death. And you need to be concerned when you're close to people in power who are demonic. We have a situation going on right here in our own nation where they have had 50 court cases and President-elect Biden has won all of them. The district attorney that was selected by this president said that there was, was no fraud. This is one of the safest elections that we've ever had. And I'm so proud of people that have been kissed by nature's son. When I went to vote, there were people on scooters, on walkers, in wheelchairs. But we said that something's got to change. I, the line was so long, Brother Jarvis, I was walking two blocks. I said, oh my God, this line is just so long. I can't believe it. I said, it's so long. One sister, you know how we are, she said, believe it. And you couldn't get ahead of anybody, but I stayed in line and we voted in numbers all over this nation and we voted according to the law that they had said and now they want to overturn the election. It's not going to happen because the truth crushed the earth will rise again. God is in charge. So how are we going to protect the gift that God has given you and me? I'm glad you asked that question. Number one, we got to pray for the gift of discernment. In order to protect the gift that God has given us, we must pray for the gift of discernment. The devil will try to set you up. He will distinguish himself as a worshiper. Jesus says that not everyone who cries out, Lord, Lord, is of God. And even in this pandemic season, I receive messages from people who talk about the power of God, God's ability to, to do great things, but they themselves don't act according to their preachment. Now, I'm not judging anybody. I'm not complaining. I'm just simply sharing my observation. If you believe that God is able, then you ought to walk by the word that we walk by faith and not by sight. We have to believe that greater is he that's in us than he that's in the world. We've got to believe that we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. We've got to live like if God takes us to it, he'll take us to it because, yea, though I walk through the valley, which means that there is a bright side somewhere. And then Herod called the Magi secretly and found out from them the exact time the star had appeared. This was an unusual star. It wasn't the kind of stars that we see in the sky. This star acted as a GPS system and guided them directly to where Jesus was. They didn't have to try to figure it out, but God led them. And somebody's trying to figure out how you're going to make it. I dare you just to follow the directions of God through Jesus Christ, who declares that he is the way, the truth, and the life. And then Herod says to them, go and search carefully for the child. As soon as you find him, report back to me so that I too may go and worship him. And you need to know that not everybody who claims that they come to worship the Lord comes to worship the Lord. Some people come to cause a disturbance in the house of God. Some people come to disrupt the things that God wants to do in your life. Oh, they may worship and say hallelujah and praise God, but you have to ask God for discernment so that you can discern the spirits that are demonic from the spirits that are the spirit of God, and God will show you the right way. And then not only do we need the gift of discernment, but secondly, we must pray. 
Uh, we can't stop praying, and I hope that you will meet me for noonday prayer. I hope you will meet me on Wednesday night for Bible study and prayer meeting. I hope that you're having your own private devotions. Every now and then I find myself talking to the Lord, and I tell you, he's a mighty good person to talk to. Sometimes he'll give you joy in the midst of sadness. He'll give you hope in the midst of despair. He'll make a way out of no way. Every now and then I have to pause sometimes when I'm walking from my house to the Golden Farm and say, Lord, I want to thank you because I got enough money to get me some milk and some butter and some potatoes. Every now and then, just thank him for how he's blessed you and thank him for how he's kept you. Thank him that he's never left you. I mean, some of you, even in this pandemic, without the checks coming, have been able to pay your rent. You ought to praise God. Somebody, your lights did not get turned off because God made a way out of no way. We don't have to depend on the government. The cattle on a thousand hills belong to God and the hills thereof. I trust in God. I know he cares for me. Oh, mountain bleak or oh, on the rolling sea, my heavenly father watches over me. And when you pray, God will direct you and God will show you things that you could not see with the natural eye. And after they had heard the king, they went on their way, and the star they had seen when it rose went ahead of them until it stopped over the place where the child was. And when they saw the star, they were overjoyed. And when they came in and they presented gifts to the baby Jesus because they knew that he was the hope of glory. Uh, when, when you come to church, everything ought not be about you, but you ought to have some gifts to bring to the Lord. Um, and even if you don't have material things like the drummer boy, he said, well, I'm just going to play my drum for him. And, and some of you, I know your money is funny and you're tore up from the floor up, but God brought you here safely. He brought you through dangers seen and unseen. Somebody hasn't even been touched by this virus because God has protected us as we have done the things that we have needed to do. I give him praise, honor, and glory. I went to see my accountant. And, and, and my accountant told me that everybody in his office had COVID-19. He said, if you had COVID, I said, oh, no, I didn't have COVID. I'm covered by the blood of Jesus. And he walks with me and he talks with me. He lets me know that I'm his and he is mine. And the Bible says that they were warned in a dream not to go back to Herod. They returned to their country by another route. Uh, the presupposition tells me that they have to pray, to ask God, because they could have listened to the authority. Uh, he was the king, uh, and, and he ruled the whole land. But when God tells you something, you listen to God because not only is he the king, but he is the king of kings. He is the Lord of lords. I don't understand how we have 12 senators that will stand up after pledging according to the Constitution that they would keep the law of the land and then want to throw out the voice of the people and want to listen to Donald Trump and not to what they know is right in their heart. I dare you to do what's right according to the word of God. I tell you, God will work it out. I hear the Apostle Paul. He says, I don't preach to please men, but I preach to please God who called me out of darkness into the marvelous light. When he went to the church at Galatia, uh, they wanted to accuse him of not being an apostle. He said, I am an apostle, not by men, but not through men, but through God the Father and Jesus Christ who raised him from the dead. I'm here telling you not what I know, but because of what God has told me. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. He has anointed me to preach the gospel, to tell you that the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. He has told me to tell you to let your light so shine because he came not into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. And now we the sons and daughters of God, and it does not yet appear what it shall be, but when he shall appear, we shall be like him. And when we all get together on one accord and give him the praise, the honor, and the glory that he so justly deserves, then God will show up and God will show out. It's not about you, but it's about him who woke us up this morning and started us on our way. I I give him praise. I give him honor. I give him glory. Somebody praise the Lord with me. Somebody give him glory. Somebody thank God for just being God all by himself. So we need discernment. We need to pray. 
But more importantly, we need to be obedient to what God says. Some folk have decided that no matter what anybody says, they're not going to do it. But you must obey what God has said. The wise men were obedient, so they listened to the angel and did not return to Herod. Mary and Joseph would also be obedient when God spoke to them and told them to take the child and flee to Egypt because they too had learned how to pray. Joseph knew something about praying because he was about to have Mary put away privately, but God spoke to him in a dream and said, this thing that has come up is of the Holy Ghost. And God has told me to try to get right with some people. So I'm not mad with anybody. I'm gonna call some folk who don't expect me to call them and let them know that God is love because I am a shepherd under the one who is the chief shepherd who loved me in spite of me. Some of you are holding grudges against family and members even in the midst of this pandemic, but if God's been good to you and you're waiting for them to call you, you ought to call them because you've been changed. I don't understand these Christian folk who talk about they can't be changed. The Lord told me to tell you that if you can't change, then you're not a Christian because my Bible says that if any man be in Christ, he is a new Christian creation. Old things are passed away and all things become new. The way I used to walk, I don't walk no more. The way I used to talk, I don't talk no more. There's a great change since I've been born. God allowed us to come through this pandemic through 10 months and into a brand new year. Then don't bring that hellish disposition that you had last year into this year. But come into this place to praise him. Be kindly affectionate one to another. The Bible says that we ought to love everyone everybody and so much more those who are of the household of faith give them praise honor and glory I'm almost done and so they got up took the child and his mother in the night and left for Egypt where they stayed until the death of Herod because God said out of Egypt I will call my son it's interesting to note um, Brother Walker, as I did the research, that the place of bondage where the Jewish people were held in captivity becomes the place of safety for Jesus because God has a way of turning things around and God will keep his word because this is the word that's found in Hosea chapter 11 verse 1. When Israel was a child, I loved him and out of Egypt I called my Son, well, let me come to close. I've kept you too long. When you have the gift of discernment, when you pray, and more importantly, when you're obedient, the devil will get disturbed. He will come, he will become furious, but he won't win. Donald Trump and all his friends, they're disturbed. They're furious, but they won't win. On January 20th, President-elect Biden will be inaugurated the president of these yet to be United States. When Herod realized that he had been outwitted by the Magi, he was furious and gave orders to kill all the boys in Bethlehem in his vicinity that were two years and under, in accordance with the time he had learned from the Magi. But Jesus would not die. But there would be death. That would be the fulfillment of the prophecy found in Jeremiah chapter 31, 15. This is what the Lord says. A voice is heard in Ramah, mourning and great weeping, Rachel weeping for her children and refusing to be comforted because there are no more. God will move according to God's will. And as we stand here today, my heart is heavy because now we have reached a place where over 350,000 people, our fellow Americans, have been killed, and majority of them are people of color. The church ought to be praying. We ought to be sad. We ought to be disturbed. We ought to be moved by the Spirit, because that means that every person that died represents a family and co-workers and friends. Look what happens when we lose a loved one. We ought to be upset about this. We ought to be protesting about this. Something is wrong. We've got to get our act together. And finally, as I close, we must experience patience. 
I know that we have been in this pandemic now for more than 10 months, and the end does not seem to be in sight. The rollout of this vaccine has not been on point. However, be you well assured that God is working it out. And once God speaks to you, you must be obedient to God's word. You must do what God says, because I heard Jesus say, I am the way, the truth, and the life. But then finally, we must learn to be patient. We must learn to wait upon the Lord, because all time is not God's time. I hear Isaiah saying, has thou not known, has thou not heard the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, faineth not, neither is weary. There is no searching of his understanding. He giveth power to the faint, and to them that have no might, he increases strength. Even the youth will be weary, and young men will utterly fall. But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They'll mount up with the wings of eagles. They'll They'll run and not get weary. They'll walk and not faint. I heard Habakkuk say that the vision is not yet for an appointed time, but at the end it will speak and not lie. Though it tarry, wait for it. So church, let's keep on praying. Let's keep on listening to God's voice. Let's be obedient. Let's keep on waiting because God is going to work it out because all things work together for good to those who love God and are the called according to his purpose. God has a vision and a purpose for this church. God has a vision and a purpose for you. If I hear Jeremiah declare in Jeremiah 29 11, I know the plans I have for you. Plans to give you a hope and a future. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. God is working it all out for our good. I don't know about you, but I thank God because I've learned some things in this pandemic. Leroy talked about that yesterday. I've learned how to talk to God. I've learned how to study God's word. I hear Paul saying to Timothy, study to show yourself approved unto God, a work when I need of not to be ashamed, but rightly dividing the word of truth. I've learned to spend time with God because when you spend time with God, he'll give you strength. I hear Paul saying, though I'm weak, uh, but then I'm strong because the power of God rests on me because his grace is sufficient. I'm ready to close now and just tell you that as we go through this year, you don't have to listen to me, but please be obedient to the voice of God because he is the way, he is the truth, he is the light. I heard the psalmist say, the Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When my enemies came upon me to eat up my flesh, they stumbled and fell. One thing have I desired of the Lord, that will I seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. If you want to take anything from me, just take this. Be obedient to his word. You got to trust and obey. When we walk with the Lord in the light of his word, with the glory he sheds on our way, while we do his good will, he abides with us still and wish all who will trust and obey. Trust and obey, for there is no other way to be happy in Jesus but to trust and obey. I want to tell you, it's still so sweet to trust in Jesus, just to take him at his word, just to rest upon his promise, just to know truth, saith the Lord, Jesus, Jesus, how I love you, how I proved him over and over, oh, for grace to trust him more. Give him praise, give him honor, give him glory. Come on, Brother Kaya. Brother Kaya is gonna sing. We're gonna open up the doors of the church. If you're here and God is moving on the altar of your heart, we invite you to come and just make this decision that you're gonna trust and obey. Trust and obey. Trust and obey. 
for there is no other way to be happy Trust and obey, that's all. Now, could y'all help us? And obey. But there is no other way to be happy. Give God some praise, some honor, and some glory. fairness to Brother Kaya. He, he just got the, that assignment this morning, but I knew I couldn't sing, so I asked him this morning, because this is the song that came to me in my shower. You may be seated. We're ready to go. Let me now make the appeal for our offering. Malachi chapter 3, will a man rob God? Yet ye have robbed me. Say, Lord, wherein have I robbed you? In your tithes and in your offerings, therefore you're cursed with the curse, even this whole nation. God says, bring me all the tithes in the storehouse. A tithe is 10 cents out of every dollar God has given you. If God has not given you anything, then God doesn't expect you to give anything. Just simply give God out of the gifts that you have. But as God has blessed you, if God has given you $100, then you owe God $10. He's given you $1,000, then you owe God $100. Now, I don't know how God does it, but I think that's a good return. Um, I've started doing some investing to the extent that I can. And... Most of the times I find myself losing money. But God is faithful. And because of God's faithfulness, we've been able to do what we have been, what we have had to do. We've been able to keep the doors of the church open, been able to make the necessary repairs, and we still have ongoing projects going, and we've been able also to make our payroll. But we can only do that um, because of your faithfulness. So please give as you have opportunity. And if you have friends and they're being blessed by our virtual and online ministry, then you can also encourage them, if they can, to give. And then you need to know that where there is a need, we try to meet that need. There's a young man who has worked with us and he's fallen on hard times. He is ill now and he has prostate cancer and just in a pretty bad way. And I could not leave the area yesterday because I had promised them that I would bring a gift to him on behalf of the Salem family. He's the one that was instrumental in getting the people that helped to repair our heating system. But I'll tell you that when you're kind to somebody else because God has blessed you, it gives you such a wonderful, wonderful feeling. And so let's just try to sh not just talk about loving God, but let's show our love, not by what we say, but by what we do. May God bless you real good is our prayer. Walk with thee. Granted, Jesus, if you please. Daily walking close to thee. Let it be, dear Lord, let it be. And keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord lift up the light of his countenance, grant you his peace and his love. And you're going in and then you're going out, and you're down sitting in the uprising. May he grant you 
a very wonderful, healthy, and prosperous new year as we seek to walk closer with him. Through Jesus the Christ, to whom be glory, majesty, dominion, and power, both now and forever. Mm, my feeble life is old. Time for me will be no more. I want you to guide me gently, safely, oh, to thy kingdom shores, to thy shores. Just a closer walk with thee. Granted, Jesus is my plea. Daily walking close to thee. Let it be, dear Lord. Let 